problem is that a lot of men don't know the nature of men when y'all are not present. Mm -hmm. There's a side of your gender that we experience that you would never have to see because when there are no real men around you, men are going to show who they really are. When they enter into a space where they know that woman is without a man, then we get to see the true nature. We I swear women just be saying shit. I'm like, they really think they be eating when they're saying this dumb shit. Like, we don't know, man. So why do you think we tell you not to dress a certain way or to go to certain places or to hang around certain people? You think it's just for kicks and giggles? Or is it because we know how certain men think? We know how creepy, how predatory, how violent certain men can be towards women. I genuinely don't get it. This politician cheated with multiple men before her husband was deployed to Afghanistan and she even destroyed another man's marriage. Her name is Nikki Haley and she is currently running for president. She is married to Michael Haley. This is you guys next president? Is this you guys? I, I don't even know who she is. I saw one video of her saying that she wanted to raise the retirement age to like 150, okay? She wanted you guys to die of the job, okay? But this is your president? Woo! who was a major in the National Guard. In 2008, Haley and Michael were fighting a lot and on the brink of divorce. At that time, she worked with a man named Will Folks. Multiple people say that they would regularly see Haley and Will out at bars drinking and Haley would be sitting in Will's lap. Haley's Cadillac SUV would also be seen in random parking lots late at night and very early in the mornings. Will later said under oath that he and Haley would often get into her car's backseat for romantic purposes. But Will isn't even the only man that she cheated with. Haley's husband deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 and a year later in 2013 a lobbyist named Larry Marchant was divorced by his wife. The reason being because of an affair that Larry had with Nikki Haley. How? This is so American. This is so American. How is your next Possibly your next president. How does she belong to the streets? I don't make no sense. How can I? <laughs> How can I trust you, my country, if your husband can't trust you in the streets? That makes no sense. You're a backseat demon as well, God. Damn. A lot of guys have a problem. A lot of these guys will choose a woman who is trying to be like an IG baddie, like an IG baddie look like, for example, like a Ruby Rose, a Young Miami. I'm making a style, you know what I'm saying? Those types and completely pass up the most elegant ones. Like a Sky Jackson, a Coco Jones, like a Candace Owens. This is a reoccurring thing I've noticed. So the next time you go on the internet and complain, damn, this girl did me dirty, this girl did me dirty, whatever, whatever. Who did you pick? Who did you pick? Because a lot of y'all are passing up the most elegant women, which makes no sense to me. They are the, yo... You have a problem, yeah? It's corn. Corn is, a, yeah. You know, we start watching this at 12, 13 years old. We see the big bum, the big tits. You know, a lot of these IG models are quasi corn stars. They have OnlyFans. So when these young men go into the dating world, that's what they want. They want their, because you just got to think. If you're watching something every day or every other day from 12, by the time you're 18, 19, 20, you're already addicted. So they go into the world and they want the IG body, they want the corn star. Even with, like, even regular guys. You look at the Jasani situation, the woman who got up on stage. You look at her TikTok, she's a IG body. And a lot of men will prioritize the IG body aesthetic over morals, personality, everything. Even some of the passport bros fall victim to this. They will go to Colombia just because the women out there have the IG body aesthetic. And obviously because they're traditional, whatever the case is as well. But make no mistake about it. The reason why men are choosing IG baddies over elegant women is because of corn. Man, well shit, maybe we can get to know each other. You know what I'm saying? I'll see it in person. You got some money? I mean, why we keep talking about money? Though? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, talking though. You're about in person. You're talking about getting to know me. Like, what, what you want? What you, I'm telling you what I want. Yeah, but I'm not really like... I'm not really one of them type of guys, okay, though. Okay, well, I'm not one of them girls. No, no, let me just explain something. All I'm saying is like, look, like... If you my girl, of course, you know what I'm saying? But you're, you're not my girl. I don't, we just not meeting right now. What's my name? Do you remember? No. Read the room, dude. 
She for the streets. This is a prime example of a man trying to take an alley cat and program her into being a house cat. And she's letting you know, dude, I need the money. I'm selling my soul. I do OnlyFans. I'm a stripper. Right now, I'm on the streets. If we ain't making money for me to please you, leave me alone. But yet, he's trying to change her. Because she looks good. She look like a IG buddy, don't she? She look good. She's trying to mold her into something that she ain't. But this is what I'm saying. There are certain types of men and a, a lot of it is just, again, the corn. They will pursue these women. They'll meet them in a the club. They'll meet them in all these places. Get with them. Now they're trying to change them because they don't actually like that she goes to the club. They just like how she looks. Okay, now I'm going to try to change her and mold her into what I want. It never works. Is. I know it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. The fact that some people really think that women can do no wrong is actually crazy to me. I'll be the first to admit there's some ain't shit guys out here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Some men really ain't shit. But some women really believe that women, all women can do no fucking wrong. Y'all never heard a woman say, I'm tired of these men, I'm about to start dating women? Why? <laughs> They're just as bad as us. <laughs> They're just as bad. I know for a fact some of y'all think women can do no wrong because if you thought they could do wrong then when you get tired of men you wouldn't say i'm about to stop dating men i'm about to go to women you would just be like hey i'm about to take a break from dating but you feel like the grass is greener because <laughs> that's <laughs> listen it's tough out here look at look at the comments i took a break my mental health was declining it's that bad <laughs> they don't tell you about this part look I'm so the next time you get tired of men just take a break switching over to women is not going to cure i think obviously you have to take into account that a lot of these women like women like they're not just switching just to switch they're obviously bisexual or gay right but i think that level of hurt and disappointment does come from the fact that they think it's going to be better on the other side but it's worse okay and the data suggests it and i don't know how to describe the feeling that i get I don't want to say I'm happy because I'm never happy to see someone upset. But it is uh, it is this feeling of being justified. Vindication. Okay, vindication. Because men ain't shit. Men are this, men are that, men are this, men are that. But the lesbian relationship dynamic is the worst of all. And that's because of how women have changed and have become something completely different. Where a lot of women are... F boys, they are literally F boys in the way that they act, the way that they move, the way that they speak. They are the worst versions of men. A lot of these women, when they date each other, they're facing levels of emotional abuse that they never experienced with men. It's too late. What's done is done. No. Empathy is a lost art because that video. I can't even prison is literally probably next to being actually tortured or eaten alive next to like actual horror movie stuff prison is top tier the most horrific experience i can possibly imagine i i cannot wrap my head around oh god it's so horrible Oh, I can't wrap my head around being in the same place, being treated like an absolute animal, being made to eat the same garbage over and over again, being locked in a cage with not only other prisoners who have been driven mad by their environment, if they weren't already mad going in there, but guards who actively work against you, guards who will try to kill you. It, oh my God, it is, I can't, I don't have the words to describe how terrified I am of the concept of prison. The horror stories that I've heard, I live in Alabama. There was a story that broke recently. This man was raped to death. He was only in there for a year. Young man and was raped to death. Had to be sent to the hospital in order to get an object dislodged from his body and he died in surgery.
Saw another story, a man eaten alive by bugs in his cell. Another story, we all know that story about that guy who was sent to prison, he was innocent and he should have never been in there. He spent two years in there being treated brutally and viciously and then he got out and within like a couple of years he killed himself. Like the way that American prisons are set up is inhumane and disgusting. I say all of that to say, under that video that I stitched, there are some comments being like, well, if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime, hee <laughs> hee, you know. Well, you know, they should have thought about that before they did the crime. You have to be so detached from your humanity in order to say that about someone. I'm not saying that there are people who don't deserve to be in prison, there are, but no human being deserves to go through what American prisons put these people through. You see, that's where, ah, uh, look, women being more empathetic is a characteristic of women, right? It's what we, it's something, it's a part of what we love about them. But sometimes they take it too far. To say that nobody deserves prison or nobody deserves the American prison because it's really harsh. Look, do I think you should you should be locked up in prison for years for selling weed? No. Okay, there are certain crimes that we know you probably shouldn't be with murderers and rapists, right? You you probably shouldn't. But the murderers and rapists deserve deserve this. Oh, a hundred percent. Okay, I don't care about your background. I don't care where you came from. Do you know that the majority of it is disgusting? You also. When you say, well, if you don't want to do the crime or if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. You don't know where these people came from. Some of these people grew up in situations to where they literally had to choose between stealing food or starving. Or they had to choose between getting killed or killing. How do I say this? A lot of women don't understand that life isn't fair. People come from different circumstances, different backgrounds. Some people have it harder than others. But you as an adult are in charge of the decisions that you make, regardless of where you came from. Do you know that the majority of rapists were also victims as children? Does that alleviate what they've done? No. Does that mean that they don't deserve jail? No, they do deserve jail and they deserve all the nastiness that goes on in jail. If I was running the world, they would no longer exist on this plane, regardless of their background, regardless of where they came from. To say nobody deserves American prison is crazy because there are people who do horrendous stuff. And I'm sorry, I don't care about your background. I really, really don't. Having enough empathy to acknowledge that someone came from a different background than you and therefore had to make harder choices than you ever have or didn't have the guidance that you had is an art form and it is a dying art form. I could not imagine. I don't give a damn if I'm talking about Ted Bundy. Do, do people like that deserve punishment? Sure. Do they, do, do they deserve endless psychological physical sexual emotional torture until the end of time yes ted barney yeah how are we not agreeing on this look like she said there are people that are look if you're if you're a petty thief or you know even if you're a decent level thief do i think you should be in the same the same level as you know ted bundy no but now you're telling me Ted Bundy doesn't deserve endless punishment for what he's done? You see, this is where we don't. There was a story that broke recently. A prison in Mississippi literally had bodies. Ooh, there's bugs outside my window. Hold on, let me close this window. There was a prison in Mississippi that literally had bodies. Hundreds of bodies buried behind the prison house. Pete, these, these men... Black and white, young and old, these men have been missing for years. Their families never knew what happened to them. Come to find out the police just killed them. 
and threw their bodies in unmarked graves. Do you understand that when you are a prisoner, your body is no longer your own. You are owned like a slave. You understand what that can do to a person's mind. They put you to work and pay you pennies on the dollar. These people can work for 80 hours and only make $17. Do you understand how horribly prisoners in America are treated? To fix your mouth or to fix your fingers to type. Well, if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. Prisoners are not violent or not these are human beings and i my heart goes out my prayers go out to people who are currently serving life sentences on death row oh my god mm. that would end my will to live there's no fucking way i would Oh God, it, it literally like makes me want to cry thinking about it because I, that's a horrible fate. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. And I mean that. And if American prison systems were, what did they, not renovated, but um, restructured. If American prisons were somewhat humane, if they were less brutal and medieval, maybe I wouldn't feel so horribly about it. If they were actually rehabilitation centers. But you have to think like these are people who they came from the gutter. They came from damn near war zones in these neighborhoods. They grew up. All they knew was abuse and neglect. Of course, they wound up in prison. Can it really be their fault? If all they knew from the moment they were born was violence and struggle and viciousness, that's what the good place is about. How, to what extent can you hold a person accountable for the choices that they make when all they ever had were bad choices to make? They were never presented with a good choice. I don't know. Just work on your empathy. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I'll play about and joke about. Prison is not one of them. So that whole, well, if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. Like, stop. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. That's, that's cool. Look. Like I said, there are certain crimes, certain charges that I would agree. You know, maybe in the ideal world, you have a separate prison for them. But there are certain people who deserve it 100%. No empathy, no remorse for them. I'm sorry. It is what it is. You made those decisions. The, the people that do things to kids, you're telling me they don't deserve Come on. Like, let's be real. And this level of empathy, you know, this is a channel about relationships. This level of empathy carries along into a lot of women's relationships where they will completely not look at a man's past because he's changed and you have to be empathetic and look at and then they end up in a messed up situation empathy is good it's great nothing wrong with it i feel like i'm very empathetic this this is what is too far this is too much to say ted bundy doesn't deserve come on Blowing weed smoke in the ozone